Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Emily Piper. She's with the University of Kentucky Extension Plant Pathologist there. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Joanna. Emily, today we're going to talk about tobacco. And, you know, and especially as we reference tobacco diseases, it's kind of been a weird year. Like in our office, we haven't seen as many tobacco diseases come through. Is yeah. that what they're seeing statewide? So I wouldn't say that we are, we're not seeing any diseases. I would say that we're seeing a broad variety of diseases. And part of that is because of our weather, our weather patterns this year. Um, so this year in particular, we've had a lot of pop-up rain showers or thunderstorms, unexpected, where, you know, just a short distance away, maybe even the neighboring farm didn't receive that same rain shower and so the problems that are occurring on one farm aren't necessarily the problems that are occurring on another one mm -hmm. and I see that most strikingly with black shank this year. Um, it's like we can never have a year and not talk about black shank and tobacco. That's right. I mean, black shank is one of those diseases that it has the potential to really decimate your yields mm -hmm. um, and so on farms that have a history of black shank, it, it, a grower cannot afford to ever rest on his laurels. But one thing that I've noticed this year is that farms that typically have very strong black shank pressure, we didn't see we didn't see black shank nearly to the extent that we've seen it in the past. Yeah, and that's probably due to the the weather patterns. It's right? due to the weather patterns. And actually what it's what it's due to is we have not had extended periods of very dry weather. And so you might be think if, if you're familiar with the Phytophthora pathogen, which is which is the fungal like organism that causes black shank, you know it's a water mold. Um, and so that pathogen is benefited by water, but it's also benefited in the tobacco pathosystem by dry weather. And the reason it's benefited by dry weather is what dry weather does is it causes the tobacco roots to spread more effectively, to really be seeking out the water in soils. As it's seeking out that water, it encounters Phytophthora, and that's where the new infections form up. This year we haven't had extended periods of dry soils, mm -hmm. and so we don't have these water-seeking roots that are formed. And, and by the same token, we don't have the, the same extent of Phytophthora infections that we've had in the past that, that wreak havoc in terms of black shank. So just because a grower maybe didn't have those issues this year, if you've had it before, there's still probably some things that you need to do for the 2019 season. Yes, still do the big three, right? So the big three are crop rotation. So get out of that ground for at least two seasons, come back in a third with tobacco. Um, choose at least a moderately resistant variety to both races of the black shank pathogen, race zero and race one. Um, and then the third piece is to use fungicides. Um, so many growers, if they're stacking at least a moderately resistant variety and a transplant water fungicide application, most growers will get through the year reasonably well. Um, you know, a follow-up black shank fungicide application, um, most years that will be helpful. Um, this year, what we saw in our research trial is it wasn't necessarily helpful because the pressure just wasn't as high for us in our location. Yeah, but, but like we've mentioned earlier, no two seasons seem like they're the same. No, and no. And so we don't want to rest on our laurels because it, it can be, next year it could be devastating. Right, right. And so those big three, I kind of look at them as an inexpensive insurance policy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're just better off protecting yourself if your farm has any history of black shank following those three principles of crop rotation, fungicide application, and variety selection. And that present that creates the best case scenario for you in the next year. Absolutely. You know, and most people are harvesting and they already have, you know, a lot of the tobacco housed in this area, but it's not ever too early to start thinking about the 2019 season variety wise, where you're gonna put you know, what fields you're going to grow the tobacco in, those types of things. That's right, that's right. Field planning is, is, is such a big part of this time of year. Um, you know, thinking about getting your soils, your soil tests lined out, that sort of thing, um, because tobacco season will be on us before you know it. 
No, it seems like it <laughs> never ends, right? Right. But that's good information to have, and we have a lot of that information available at the Extension Office through research from the university. Right. And so we can help with any of those questions that you might have for the 2019 growing season. So we appreciate you watching and hope you have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.